Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. In this video, we're going to talk about the third and last of the sorts that we're going to cover in this chapter. Uh, we're going to look at insertion sort. So we've already looked at bubble sort and uh, selection sort. And we've talked about the fact that bubble sort, while it's very easy to code, it's not really something that you would do in real life because it involves lots of swapping around. The selection sort is something that you might actually do, especially if you have items that where moving an item is costly. Uh, something like the moving cars in a parking lot, maybe even moving weights in a gym. Uh, but if you were doing something with, uh, with small items that were easier to move, you might not be tempted to use a selection sort. In that case, you might actually decide to use an insertion sort. So if we go back to our standard array that we've been playing with, and we look at what happens with an insertion sort. The idea of an insertion sort is we're basically going to, at any given time, ignore the back end of, of the array. And so we're going to start off with effectively thinking of this as an array of two elements. And we're going to look at the last element in it and ask the question, is it in the right place? Okay, in other words, does it go before the five? And as we do this, we wind up building up a larger and larger array in the front that is perfectly sorted. And so every time that we insert something, we only have to move it as far forward as it needs to go. And we'll see that's actually a significant advantage to the insertion sort. So let's go through and look at what insertion sort would do with this particular array. Uh, so we, once again, if an array of one element, just the five, is sorted, so we don't even bother dealing with that, we start by looking at the eight. And we ask the question, does the eight go before the five? And the answer is no, so nothing changes. Does the three go before the eight? The answer is yes. Now, instead of doing swaps, so you can write an insertion sort that does swaps. However, because of the way that the insertion sort works, it's actually far more efficient if you take the item that you're going to be working with and you store it down here in the temporary. And then I look and I say, does three go before the eight? And the answer is yes. So we simply drag the eight back. We copy it back. Does, eight, does the three go before the five? Yes. So the five moves. Notice that I've only had, I pulled the three down, and then I move the eight and the five, and then I pull the three back up. Whereas, otherwise I would have done one, two swaps, and every swap has to do a total of uh, three assignments. So I would have six assignments there, instead of the one, two, three, four. And that advantage will actually grow as we go on. So for example, the two. Well, I'm gonna pull the two down, and then I check, does two go before the eight? Yes. So I pull this back. Does the two go before the five? Yes. So I pull this back. Does two go before the three? Yes. So I pull this back. And, and here is the two. The nine. And this is where insertion sort can get its a big advantage. So at this point, I know everything eight and forward is sorted. So I look at the nine and I check. Does the nine go before the eight? And the answer is no. So I don't do anything. And I, now I know that it's sorted out to here. Uh, what about the six? Well, the six does go before the nine, so we'll pull it down here. We pull the nine back. We pull the eight back. And then I copy the six back up into here. With the four, take the four down, pull the nine back, pull the eight back, six goes back, five goes back, and the four gets copied into location right there. Now the seven, seven goes there, nine goes there, eight goes there, and here again, because the seven is fairly large, it doesn't move very far. Okay, We don't do many comparisons. I compare the seven to the six, I find out it doesn't go before it, and that means the seven never gets compared to the five, the four, the three, or the two. Okay. And that's the real advantage of the insertion sort. When things are close to where they're supposed to be, you do very few comparisons with them. And in fact, the, the optimal for an insertion sort, if you have data that is almost sorted, if it's close to sorted, it turns out that the insertion sort is remarkably efficient. Uh, the, entire, the entire thing, both comparisons and memory moves, 
will be order in. It will only do roughly in comparisons and roughly in uh, memory moves. So for the, the one, now of course the one was at the exact opposite end of where it needed to be, so we have to move everything down. We do our comparisons all the way down. We get to the front, and then we have to stop. So that's what the insertion sort looks like when we're kind of acting it out. Now we want to go look at it in code. So we go back to our sorts, and I want to write def insertion sort takes our array, which is an array of double. I have an outer loop, just as with the other sorts, and this outer loop is going to go from 1 until arr.length. So whereas the other ones went from 0 until length minus 1, this one goes from 1 to length because it is the element that I am going to push forward in there. Okay. And as we saw when I was acting this out, the first thing that I do here is I make a temporary variable tmp equals array sub i. So I take the thing at the ith index and I copy it into my temporary variable. That way I can just push elements down and I don't have to do complete swaps. Now, the next thing I need is I need another loop, but I'm not going to use a for loop. And the reason I'm not going to use a for loop is because this particular loop needs to stop possibly shy of zero. So when I, if I were to write a for loop, I could have a for loop that goes from i down to zero, but then it would always go to zero. And the advantage of the insertion sort is I don't always have to go that far. So instead, I'm going to start by making a j var, and then I'm going to have a while loop. So I want to keep going while j is greater than, uh, yeah, well, j is greater than negative one, and the value that I'm looking at, so a r r sub j happens to be uh, greater than my temp. Okay. These are my two conditions when I stop. Either I got all the way to the beginning, so if, if j kind of fell off the, the beginning, uh, then I uh, wouldn't try to think the We'll, we'll check for our off by ones here in just a bit. And that's one of the things, while the insertion sort winds up being almost as short as bubble sort, the logic in it is a bit more complex. And so definitely the testing is gonna be significant to us here. Um, okay, what happens inside of here? Well, I know that the ARR sub J is, is greater than temp. So I simply set ARR sub J plus one equal to ARR sub J. I shift the jth item back one in the array, and then, because this is a while loop, do not forget to increment i, otherwise this will be an infinite while loop and it will just sit there and spin around forever and ever. Once we're done with all of that, we want to copy arr sub j plus one, oh, this should be a minus, I'm sorry, subtract from j because we are going to a low bound, not an upper bound, uh, equals temp. I could surround that inside of an if, but the reality is it's a single assignment, and for an array of doubles, doing the conditional on the if would probably make it run slower. You could do a, a test, but in this case it saves me typing just to not bother to put the if and to always copy it there, even if it happens that j didn't move, and so j plus one is equal to i, and we copy the thing right back to where it started from. So, let's see if this works switch our min sort to an insertion sort. And I have to admit, there are chances that this doesn't work, but actually it looks like it did. Uh, 0 0.008, 0 0.09, 0 0.1, 0 0.12, 0 0.19, 0 0.19, blah, 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 all the way down, 0 0.71, 0 0.899, okay. So this is our insertion sort. We have now gone through a bubble sort, which was very easy to write. The logic is very simple and straightforward. Um, 
but it's somewhat inefficient and it's definitely not something you would ever do by hand. Two, our min sort, which actually is something you probably would do you know, by hand, especially if you had items that uh, take a long time to, to move around, something like cars in a parking lot. And the insertion sort uh, was our, our most recent sort. The insertion sort is actually, it turns out, unless the things are hard to move around, if things are hard to move around, the, the men sort is, is our ideal. But if they're not hard to move around, or if they are in uh, somewhat close to sorted order, the insertion sort winds up being the best of all three. Because, basically, because of this while loop allows it to not do as many comparisons. The men sort and the bubble sort always do the same number of comparisons. It's basically n squared divided by 2. They always do that. The insertion sort could actually only do n minus 1 comparisons, assuming that uh, this, the array was already in order. And if it's only slightly out of order, it won't do much more than that. So that's it for this sort. We'll talk about how we could be a little bit more robust in our test.